Hi everyone and welcome back to our Working with Plotly series. This is episode 6 and in this episode we're going to be working on building maps with Plotly and we'll install a few other required packages. If you're running an older version of Plotly, you'll most likely need to update to at least version 2.5.1 and you can do that by running the pip install Plotly with the two flags upgrade, but I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Now Plotly offers a range of map making functions and integrations. For the purpose of this video, we're going to be working with the Choropleth mapping. Now, a Choropleth map is a map in which areas are shaded based on the measurement of statistical variable being displayed. So we can use uh, population, for example, and that's what we're going to aim to do here. We're going to pick a specific state and try and build a map with Plotly shading the regions based on different populations for the state. Now, we're also going to be working with a data set from the Plotly repository as well. With that, let's get started and jump into our Jupyter Notebook. To get started, we need to set up the following requirements. If you're working, again, with an outdated version of Plotly, please use the following command, the pip install Plotly, the two flags, upgrade, it's going to update your Plotly. We also need the following packages installed. Now, if you're working with a contained environment, you will need to activate it first. If you're working from root, you can launch the terminal or anaconda prompt and simply run the installs for these packages. If you're working with a contained environment that you set up, you need to activate it first. So for Mac and Linux, remember, source, activate, then the name of the environment. So you'd pass in your name of your environment here. For Windows, it's simply the activate, then the name of your environment. You do not need the source command for Windows. So you would type activate my environment name for the name of your environment. All right. Now we're installing GeoPandas. We're also installing Shapefile and Shapely. GeoPandas is a library that adds support for geographical data to pandas objects. GeoPandas helps working with geospatial data in Python much easier. The Python shapefile library, Reason writes ESRI shapefiles in pure Python, and Shapely is used for manipulation and analysis of planar geometric objects. So we need the following three packages installed so we can start building our maps. If you have any questions, comments, or issues installing these packages, please post in the video in the comment section, and I would be more than happy to help debug them. Now, we can get started building our map here, but we're going to need our import statements as usual. We already have them, but just so we have them in this episode, we need to use the figure factory, so we're going to use the import plotly dot figure underscore factory as ff and import pandas, of course, import pandas as pd. I have the following data set grabbed, so we're also going to need to create a data frame. We are going to need to have our data frame equal using pandas, so pd.read underscore csv, open parentheses, we're going to be working with the following data set from Plotly, don't need this extra here, let's close this, let me bring it back up, we can keep it organized, and to visualize it, let's jump to the data set. If you want to visit the raw data, you can follow the link within the data set. And we have the following information. Now we are working with to analyze the population on the map, we're going to split the map by one state. So let's start off by working towards the state of New York. And we can use New York if you search for New York within this, if you're wondering what the values represent, you can also see the name for state name, city name, population, and you can also see the FIPS. Now FIPS actually stands for the Federal Information Processing Standard Codes. So every US state and county has an assigned ID regulated by the US federal government. So it's gonna be under the term FIPS. But let's jump back in. If you have any questions about the data, you can visit it here. Let's jump back into our notebook since we're gonna be working with the data frame. We also have to assign a scope. Since we're working for the state of New York, Let's set our scope equal to. Now we need to create the open brackets here because we're going to be passing in the value of New York. Let's run this. All right, we have that cell. Now let's get started creating our data frame for the values that we want to take out. We also need to take the population. We're going to be working with the FIPS values as well within the data frames. And we have the data frame already created. And that's very useful because that's what we're going to work with to grab specific data. But the, for the purpose of this Choropleth map, we also need 
the state name. We need to check if it's in the scope. We need the total population listed for the state. We also need the FIPS. Remember those codes, the FIPS codes listed as well, created with their own unique name. So I grabbed the following so you don't have to watch me type it out. And we can see that we are creating our data frame, a new data frame off of our original with the state name in the scope. So we have our scope of New York. We're using our state name for it. We are also creating a new data frame of values for total populations. We are listing them within our data frame for the specific state along with the FIPS. Remember, this map is going to be built for one state. We're looking to build the color distribution within the state, listing different colors for different geographical regions having different populations. So we have the FIPS codes listed within a new data frame as FIPS and the values as well for total population. New data frames created, as you've seen over these videos that working with pandas and creating new data frames comes in very handy. You have the standard data frame to grab our original data, but then we can modify it by creating new ones, grabbing the values that we want, state name, total population, and the FIPS codes, checking them, and that working with it, they are in the scope, and we're using the state of New York, and we'll test it on a couple others once we build this out further. For the next part, I'm just gonna run this cell really quick. For the next part of our creation of this map, we need to define a color scale. So again, I grab the values because otherwise this would be pretty repetitive. I grab these values. These are hex values for certain colors. Now you can change them. You can add on more colors. You can swap them out for colors that you would like to work with. These colors are going to be used to differentiate the counties within each state, how the state is broken down within its certain populations. You can also work with other color scales to represent higher or lower populations. Just for now, we're looking just to distinguish the different populations within the state. Also, if you do run it later, say you want to try a different state other than New York, we're going to test out a couple and it's going to come back with a color scale error stating that there are not enough values. If there are more counties, more of the distribution than there are color scales, it's going to throw that error. So you can also add in more hex values if you're looking to work with a state that has more counties than the number of the color scale values that we have in here. So you can run this as well for the color scale. These are the colors that we're going to use. Again, hex values, you can edit and customize them as you want. Now we're going to actually get into the creation. Use the figure creation for the create choropleth map. And we could do that with the following, calling our figure equals, remember we're using the figure factory, so we're going to use the default command of create underscore coral pleth. Then we need to open the brackets. Let's return that. And I want to space it out, so bring it to the following, setting our FIPS values equal to FIPS, some of the default information, our values equal to values, scope set to scope. We also need to bring our color scale equal to color scale. The round legend, round legend values equal to true. Now we also need to specify a simplify county and simplify state value. Now simplify county can determine the simplification factor for counties. So basically the larger the number that you have, the fewer vertices each polygon has and simplify state has the state outline default for both are 0 0.2 but we're going to set them to zero you can also customize these further if you want to work with them so we can have these simplify county equal to zero and simplify state equal to zero i'm going to add another comma to sum this up, we have to also give an outline. We want colors for the county outline. We want a state outline. And since we're working with the figure, a legend would probably be a pretty good idea and a title as well. So let's finish this up. Let's return this. I have my spacing there, a little incorrect, but let's define our county outline. So we're working with the counties within the state, county outline equal to, we need to open these with brackets. So we're working with the color here to define the color set to our RGB value, red, green, blue. We want, let's use 15, 15, and 55. We also need 
the following value to set a width option as in 0 0.5 and these are all customizable again you can try them out i'm going to grab the rest here so you don't have to watch me type it in and we will go over it let me just bring this over here and let me grab them let me add these in here i'm going to bring them to the same level just for organizational purposes here really quickly and we have the following state outline so we have all these default values that we have to specify but we also want to give a legend title for the values for our legend just to make it more readable and we're going to give it a title of new york you can also switch the title if you want to try a different state but this is the main parameters that we're going to have to give to the creating of the choropleth creating our fips values and scope the rest we have to set our color scale legend values as well we are using the simplify county and state using the outlines because we need to give some colors to differentiate we're going to see that in a moment when we finally run this and we also have to specify a title for the legend and the overall map now if we bring this down give ourselves some space here let's run it just to make sure i have no errors we do have an end of error here because i need to give the following there we go missing the comma right here always great to check and let's finally finish this visualization up as we've done in the previous videos we are going to need to plot it so what can we do since we're working in jupiter we can use the iplot function if you want to get it online do the pi.iplot let's use iplot pass in our figure we also going to give it a file name if you want to get it online let's do uh choropleth map creation and we can run it let's hit the cell to execute give it a moment and there we have it we have the new york broken down by population per county and we can also hover over the map to visualize the different population counts of new york you can also test it in other states as well we can go back here if we want to bring everything into the same cell that'll just make it even easier to run so let's grab everything just for experimentation purposes here i'll grab one more exit out of that okay and let's try we can also just cut just by passing in here let's try new jersey and we could run this as well And there we have it we do have new york so we would have to switch the title we would want new jersey on the title here and we have new jersey broken down by population per county and we could try a final one let's try california switch our scope to the state of california you can check your data frame and the data from here for additional values and let's run the map to get the visualization for California. And there you have it, the creation of the Choropleth map. Again, you can use these values to customize further built-in scales depending on the population per county. But the main point and takeaway of this is to use the figure, the figure factory creation of the Choropleth map to be able to build it based on a color scale, working with the data and the data frames to split it by the population on a map working from this data, to be able to take our data, reuse it, to build the map to distinguish the counties for the U.S. states. It's a very useful tool if you're looking to run analysis on any kind of specific methods that are working with this type of data. As always, you can bring it, export it to Plotly for further customization. If you use your Pi iPlot, you can bring it online as well. Now, we're going to wrap things up here for this video because in the next video, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to introduce a challenge with Plotly. We're going to go over some information, present the challenge to build with Plotly. And then in the following video, we're going to go through and see how we can solve that or explore some ways on how to solve that challenge. So if you have any questions about this video, any questions about what we implemented, if you had trouble installing any of the packages, any comments, ideas for Plotly, please feel free to share them. Also, Subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just a great way to stay up to date with what's going on in the industry. And I will see you in the next video.